welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make this super cute and fully washable zipper tote bag. It features a really fun quilt as you go front pocket here, a zipper enclosure, and then of course another fun pocket on the inside so you can store all of your goodies. This project is relatively easy and beginner friendly. Let's go ahead and get started. For this project, you're gonna need some batting for the bag. You'll need an extra piece of batting for your front pocket. You'll need a zipper, some lining fabric, some fabric for your outsides, some fabric for your pocket on the inside, and then a bunch of fun scraps for our quilt as you go pocket. I'm also gonna be using this cotton webbing for my strap, but I will link a video below where I make my own fabric strap. You can do either one, but you'll need two straps, and I'm making mine 28 inches long. Um, I'm about 5'2", and that seems to work for me. If you are taller, you may wanna kinda measure and make your straps uh, long enough to fit your own body. And then you'll also need some basic sewing supplies. I like these Wonder Clips, rotary trimmer, and a ruler. And then if you're curious, I'm using this poppy cotton um, line. This one's called Prairie Sisters. And it's just a beautiful line of fabric and I've been making a lot of things out of this and really enjoying it. As always, exact cutting measurements will be in the description box below this video. Just click the show more link right down here below the video and you can get all of that information. I will also have a link to the PDF written instructions if you prefer that instead of re-watching the video. Let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna start off by preparing our zipper. That way it's just kind of out of the way and ready to go. So I've taken two pieces that are two and a half inches long and then mine are about two inches wide, but really they just need to be as wide as your zipper. And then I've pressed in the short edges or the two inch side edges by a quarter of an inch. And then I folded that in half and pressed it one more time. And then I did that to both of these little pieces. The next thing that we're gonna do is chop off this metal piece down here on the end. I like to get rid of that right off the bat simply because if you sew over it, you'll break your needle, and it's just a lot easier to deal when you don't have to worry about it. So just use a pair of scissors or a rotary trimmer, cut that off, and throw it away. The next thing we're gonna do is take this edge we just cut, and we're going to place it inside our little strip here, all the way to that folded edge, and then we're gonna take this over to our sewing machine, and we're gonna sew down this edge, and I usually go back and forth twice just to kinda make sure it's on there good, and just make sure you're getting both sides. All right, so here we are, and I just went ahead and ran a stitch down that, so that side is secure. And now we're gonna do the same thing with the other end. So next, I am going to unzip my zipper just to get my zipper pull out of the way, make sure I don't accidentally chop it off. And I'm just going to get my ruler here. I'm lining up my 14 and a half inch mark down here, and I'm just gonna cut off this end. All right, next, I'm going to do the same thing on this end and just place it inside our little tab that we've created right here. Just make sure those edges stay together and then take that over to your machine and sew right down this edge to secure this side. All right, our zipper is ready to go and then we can just chop off these little edges here. I like to make mine a little bit bigger than my zipper just to give me some wiggle room. And here's our finished zipper. We can go ahead and just set this aside until later when we need it. The next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and prepare our inside pocket. And so we have a piece of fabric here that is about seven by nine. And I'm just gonna fold that in half right sides together so that it's seven by about four and a half. Using a quarter of an inch seam, I'm gonna sew up both sides and then in towards the center, leaving about a two inch opening to turn our pocket right side out. Next, I'm just gonna trim off my corners just a little bit, just to get them, make it a little bit easier to turn our pocket right side out. Just don't cut into your stitch line and you'll be good to go. Now we can turn our pocket right side out. And just poke out all those corners. And then I'll also take this over to my ironing board and just press it to make sure everything's nice and neat. I also like to use a hair marker. If you don't have one of these, you can use a pencil or uh, you know, the, tip of a pin. Just be careful you don't poke too hard and poke through your corners. And then with this opening edge, I'm just going to press it in with my fingers here about a quarter of an inch. It should fold that way naturally. And then I'll take this over to my ironing board and just press the whole pocket. And then I'm gonna take it over to my sewing machine and just run a top stitch right down this folded edge just to make it look a little bit more finished. So here's our finished top edge of our pocket and now we're gonna go add this to our lining. 
Next, we're gonna take our pocket and we're gonna center it um, horizontally on one of our pieces of lining. Mine are about four inches in from either side and I put mine about three inches down from the top. I'm gonna take this over to my sewing machine, back stitch here and here, and I'm just gonna sew all the way down this side, across the bottom and back up the other side. And when you go across the bottom, just make sure you are closing up that opening in your pocket. All right, so this piece of lining is now done. So we're just gonna take both of our lining pieces and just set them aside. So for my bag, I wanted it to be two-toned, but you can also just use one piece of fabric for the outside of your bag. If you wanna do that, just make it 14 and a half by 14 and a half square. You'll need two of those pieces. For this two-toned version, I have cut two pieces that are nine and a half by 14 and a half and two pieces that are five and a half by 14 and a half and we're going to sew those together using a quarter inch seam allowance so that we'll have two outer pieces for our bag. In order to do that I'm just going to fold this one down on top of this one. If you have two prints just make sure they are right sides together and then sew right along this edge using a one quarter inch seam. So here are our finished outside panels. I'm gonna take one and set it aside with my other piece of batting, and I'm gonna take one of my pieces of batting. Now, if you don't wanna use quilt batting, you can use fusible fleece, you can use a stiffer, like heavyweight interfacing. You can also use one of my favorite products, which is the foam batting. I just don't have any, so I'm using leftover quilt batting, but you can use whatever you want for this. You just wanna have something that's gonna give your bag a little bit of structure. So we're gonna take one of our pieces of outside fabric. We're going to line it up on top of our piece of batting. And I always forget to mention this in my supplies, but I also like to use spray basting. This is the 505 temporary adhesive. And I'm going to go ahead and just spray a little bit and just kind of press that down. You just need enough that it's not going to move around on you while you are quilting it. We're going to do this to both of the outside pieces. Next, I'm gonna take this over to my sewing machine and I'm gonna do a little bit of quilting. You can do free motion quilting, straight line quilting, whatever you want to secure the outside fabric to your batting. And I'm gonna do that for both of my outside panels. If you wanna be a little bit more precise with your quilting, you can also use a ruler to pre-mark. I'm gonna use one of these friction erasable pins. It will come off with heat, so when I'm done quilting this, I can just iron my marks off. But what I like to do for diagonal quilting is take my 45 degree line on my ruler here and place it on my seam that I just created. And then you can draw a line. And then you can use that line as a guide. So if you want to do lines every one and a half inches, say, you can do that. So here are our finished outside panels and I did the crisscrossing as you can see and then I just showed you ironing it to get rid of those red marks. And then I just did a straight stitch right here down this seam about a quarter of an inch up. And then I didn't do any other quilting on the top just cause I felt like that looked like enough. So the outside panels of our bag are done. We are going to set those aside. Now that the outside of our bag is done, it's time to work on the fun part, and that is the quilt as you go front pocket. So I'm gonna take our piece of lining for the front pocket, and this is just nine by 14 and a half inch wide, and our piece of batting for the front pocket. I'm gonna lay the lining face down, so right side down, and then I'm gonna place the batting on top of that. And then using our 505 spray, I'm just going to adhere the lining to the batting and I'm just adding a little bit just enough to keep it in place while we're adding our quilt as you go pieces you don't need a whole lot and then we're going to go ahead and start with our quilt as you go section and I'm just going to bring this whole little pile of scraps over to my sewing machine and just start adding them and for the first scrap I'm just going to kind of pick one that I like place it somewhere in the center honestly it doesn't even have to be in the center and then I'm going to lay that down then I'm going to take a second piece that's about the same height or width, whichever, and place that right side down. We're going to take this over to our sewing machine and using a quarter of an inch seam allowance, sew along this edge, and then we'll fold it open and then sew some straight lines just to secure both of these pieces. And then we'll continue adding pieces as we go until our whole panel is filled up. All right, so I've just cut my thread and as you can see, 
I've just folded this piece out. Now you can take this and press it with an ironing board. I find it's easier just to finger press it open and keep going. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just run some stitches every maybe half inch or inch um, and just do some straight stitching to secure these two pieces down even farther. And I am cutting my stitches in between each row. I had someone ask last time and they thought I was just leaving the threads uncut, but my machine does cut them. So just in case anyone else was confused about that. So here we are, our beginning row is finished and then I'm gonna just grab a next piece that I want and a pair of sharp scissors will come in kinda handy here. You're gonna just want to cut that about the right length. And then we're gonna place this right side down here along that edge. And again, sew a quarter of an inch seam allowance, finger press it open, and then do a few straight stitches to secure it. And then continue adding pieces in this exact same manner until your whole batting piece is filled up. All right, so here is our finished panel. And as you probably saw while I was sewing, I actually let my fabric go over the edges of my batting. And I like to do that that way once I trim it all down, which I have now done, I make sure that all my fabric is going all the way to my edges. And I just trimmed this down to 14 and a half inches wide by nine and a half inches tall. I think I said nine inches earlier, so I apologize. Um, in the description box below, all the measurements are correct there and in the PDF pattern as well. Next, we're gonna take a piece of scrap that is two and a half inches by 14 and a half inches. And I've just taken that and pressed it in half with wrong sides together, so the pretty side is out. And we're going to line up this raw edge with the top raw edge of our pocket. So the folded um, nice edge is pointing towards you. And we're gonna take this over to our sewing machine and sew using a one quarter of an inch down this seam. Now I'm just gonna take our binding and press it up and you can take this over to the ironing board and press it there as well if you like um, but i'm just going to press it up and over to the other side so that when i flip it over we've got it on the back side here and now we're just going to sew right down this edge So here is our finished outside pocket and we are all ready to attach that to the front of our bag. So we're gonna take one of our pieces of outside and I was originally gonna do it this way but I think I actually like the blue better so I'm gonna flip it over and we're going to line up the raw edges of our pocket with the raw edges of our bag and we're going to go ahead and just using a basting stitch sew down these sides and across the bottom and that's just going to keep our pocket in the right place when we go to put our bag all together. So our front pocket is nice and attached to our front panel here. And then the next thing we're gonna do is attach our um, handles. So my handles are approximately one and a half inches wide by about 28 inches long. You can of course make yours any size that you like. Um, and then if you're using something like I am here where it's a little bit um, can fray on the edges, you may wanna just run a zigzag stitch right along the edges of your um, handles. And then we're gonna go ahead and attach them to our bag. And so what I'm doing here is just putting them approximately three inches in from either side and then down just so they're behind the binding on our pocket here so it kind of looks like they go inside of our pocket. And I'm just using the three inch markers on my mat here so that I kind of know where that is. And then you can either use a pin or a wonder clip or something just to kind of keep that in place while you're sewing. I'm gonna throw a couple wonder clips on here because my straps are really thick. And then we're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew a square with an X inside on both of them. And I will go back and forth over it a few times just to give it a little bit of extra strength. And then we're gonna actually do the same thing on our other our outside panel as well. So wherever you put your straps on this one, just make sure you put them in the same place on this one. All right, and we're gonna do the same thing to this one. Sew a square with an X inside and go around it a few times just to give your straps extra strength. So here we are, I finished sewing all of my straps on there and now we're ready to go ahead and assemble our bag. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take one of our outside layers first. We're going to bend this strap kind of down and out of the way and these straps are a little bit thick so we're just gonna kinda have to work with them. 
Next, we're gonna take our zipper that we made and we're gonna place it right side down on top of this. And the right side, if you're new to zippers, is just this side with your zipper pull on it. So I'm gonna open that most of the way up just so it's already done and I don't have to think about it. It also makes it easier when you're sewing this on. We're gonna turn it right side down so the zipper pull is gonna be down. We're just gonna line that right up with this raw edge of our bag and I'm gonna use a couple of wonder clips just to secure that in place. And don't worry about this loose bit, it can be hanging down there. We just need this top one. Next we're going to take one of our pieces of lining. I grabbed the one with the pocket, I like to do that one first. And you are just want to make sure that your pocket opening is going towards the zipper, so it's basically going the correct direction. We're going to lay that down, right side down, on top of our zipper up here. And we're just going to pin that in place. Now you notice I kind of have some lumpiness going on here because of my straps, that's okay, we just need to kind of work around it. So you want to just pin this all in place. And then we're gonna take this over to our sewing machine and sew right along this top raw edge. And I'm gonna just get as close to my zipper teeth as I can. You of course can use a zipper foot, I don't actually have one for this machine, so I'm just gonna use my regular quarter of an inch foot. Now I'm at my zipper pull here, and so I'm just going to lift up my presser foot and then reach underneath here and slide my zipper pull out of the way. Sorry, I didn't mean to hit the camera. And then now I can lower my presser foot and keep going. So this is what our bag should be looking like. We've got our zipper in the center here, lining on one side and then the outside of our bag on the other. And I'm just gonna go ahead and fold this with my lining going away from me and just run a top stitch right along this top edge of the zipper and the outside of the bag. It'll kind of help keep it laying the correct direction when we're done and it also gives it a more finished look. But make sure you don't sew across your lining during this portion. So here's what our bag is looking like. I just went ahead and ran a top stitch along this edge. So next we're going to go ahead and just fold our lining back and set this one aside. We're gonna grab our other outside piece of our bag and we're gonna do the same thing with the zipper. We're gonna place our zipper right side or zipper side down. So it'll be the right sides of the bag touching each other and line them up along this top edge. So we're gonna clip everything along that top edge and again, we're gonna grab our other lining piece and just make sure that if you have directional print like I do that it is going the right direction. We're going to lay that right side down and line that up with this top edge and again, clip that in as well. And we're gonna do the same thing we did on the other side and stitch all the way down this raw top edge to secure the zipper, the outside of the bag and the lining. Okay, so your project should be looking like this now, and we're gonna do the same thing we did on this side. So we're gonna flip this lining over to the other side so that all we have on this side is the zipper and the outside of the bag. And then I'm probably gonna take this over to my ironing board and just press it so the zipper is going the right direction here. And then I'm gonna run a stitch right along the top to finish off this edge. So our project should be looking something like this. We've got that nice top stitch right here. The next step is to unzip our zipper. And we wanna do this so that we can turn our bag right side out when we're all done. And I put it about, I don't know, three inches away from the edge. That way when I'm sewing over here, I'm not worried I'm gonna run over this, but it's wide enough we can turn our bag. Next, we're gonna fold our two outside layers together and our lining layers together. And then from there, you can just go ahead and line everything up all nice and straight, and you're gonna clip around all of the edges of your bag. And we're, we've got a little bit of bulk here from our handles, we just kinda have to work around that. All your edges should line up when you're sewing. Next, we're gonna take this over to our sewing machine, and using a 1 half inch seam allowance, we're gonna start down here on one corner of our lining, and we're gonna go sew down the side all the way around our bag and back to this clip and we're leaving about a six or so inch opening down here in our lining so that we can turn our bag right side out when we're done. All right, so our project should be looking like this. Now if you'd like, you can turn it right side out and pretty much be done, but we're gonna go ahead and box the bottoms of our corners here. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put my hand all the way inside. Now I can feel my pocket in here. My pocket is attached to this layer, so you just wanna make sure it stays with that layer. If you need to, look inside your bag and make sure that your hand is in between the two outside layers and not in between your pocket and your outside layer. Hopefully that makes sense. 
And I've got my fingers over here and my thumb kind of over here and I'm gonna press down in half to make this sort of a taco shape. Now if you need to, you can kind of pull your straps out of the way for this part. And the goal is to line up this seam with this seam and kind of create this triangle shape here. And so I'm just gonna kind of go like that. So here we have our little triangle. I'm gonna turn it so you can see it a little bit better here. I'm going to then take my ruler and I've got a 45 degree line on my ruler right here. And I'm gonna do just, I think, maybe one and a half inches for the bottom of this. I don't want anything too large, but you can do whatever size you like. We're gonna line up that diagonal seam with this flat edge. And I'm gonna line up my one and a half mark where my stitches turn the corner there. And I'm just gonna draw a little line going across there. And then I'll put a couple wonder clips just to hold that side in place. I'm gonna turn it around and do the same thing on this other corner. And again, you just want this seam and this seam to be lined up nice and neat. And we're gonna line our ruler up again, same exact way with our diagonal line, lining up with this edge. Place a couple wonder clips. So here's what the outside of the bag part looks like, and now we're gonna do the same thing on the lining. All right, so I've done the same thing with my lining here. Here's our opening, and I've just put my finger in this corner and lined up this seam with this seam, and I'm gonna put that one out of the way. We're gonna do this one first. Again, make sure your seams are lining up on that seam, and whatever size you did on the outside, do the same thing on the lining. Again, I'm gonna put a couple wonder clips just to hold it in place. All right, now we're gonna take all four corners over to my sewing machine. We're gonna sew directly on our line, and I do backstitch at the stops and starts just to give it a little bit of extra strength, especially on the outside of the bag. All right, our bag should be looking like this, and now we can go ahead and carefully turn it right side out. Grab these clips off my straps and make sure you don't leave any in the inside of your bag either, just in case one fell off during all of the commotion. So here is one of our boxy bottoms. Super cute. Now if yours looks weird, it is possible that you accidentally sewed it with your pocket on the right side, or the wrong side, so check your boxy bottoms before you cut it off, that way you can fix it. Here's another one, ooh, that seems good. That might be the best one I've done. All right, our last step here is to just close up this opening in our lining. So our next step is just to fold in these edges about a quarter of an inch or so. I usually like to finger press them, but you can take them over to your iron. And we're just gonna take them over to our sewing machine and sew right along this edge to close up our opening. All right, our edge is closed, and now we can just tuck our lining down inside of our bag. And we're all done. All right, and we're done with this bag. Now I like to take this over to my ironing board and give it one more final press, uh, but otherwise we are done with this project. All right guys, that is it for this project. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm really enjoying these Quilt As You Go panels. I think they're so versatile and fun. And I did wanna point out like I did at the beginning of the video that this bag is fully washable and I have had a lot of people suggesting that you make these for friends and family who work in the healthcare industry. They can bring these bags to work, stuff you know any dirty scrubs or anything like that they need to bring home, take it home and they can wash their scrubs and their bag all together and everything will get nice and clean. One of the other tutorials that I did is my Aloha Satchel, same deal, fully washable, and then it had these cute little backpack straps. So all of these bags are totally 100% washable. You can just unzip the zipper, throw them in your laundry just like you would anything else, and they'll come out sparkling clean. And like I mentioned in the description box below this video, all the products that I used today will be linked for you as well as a PDF version of this pattern, so definitely click the show more link. You can get all that information down there. And then the quilt behind me that everyone I always ask about is my vintage spring quilt. This one is also available in my store and I will put a link for that in the description box below as well. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe. I hope you are all staying safe and healthy out there. Thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you next time. Bye.